Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. I hope that you're doing well. Today, we're talking about flankers. Flankers, they're all garbage, right? No? Today's video is gonna run long, I'm sure, so I apologize ahead of time. But I wanted to talk about flankers and how it's kind of trendy to hate on them. So a quick background on me, I guess, in case you guys were unaware. I started collecting fragrances in earnest around 2003, 2004. That's when I started working at my local mall. And I would go to my local JCPenney, my local Belk, and pick up fragrances. Smell them, buy them, started collecting them, the whole thing. So yeah, I started a channel in 2016, but that's not when I started with fragrances. I say that because when I start talking about fragrances from my experience in the mid 2000s and on during this video, I was living it for what that's worth. I'm not trying to like fill in the blanks after the fact. And I know a lot of you guys watching this were living it back in the 80s or even 70s. All right, flankers, let's start talking about them. They're not a new thing. You can go back to fragrances from the 80s and you'll see flankers coming out then and even before. Flankers were very different then. Typically it would be a sport version of an existing fragrance or sometimes a more intense or extreme version of an existing fragrance. And you didn't have at that point lines that were completely fleshed out where you had four, five, six, seven flankers. So flankers at that point in time, typically it would be, like I said, just a sport fragrance more often than not. And as we go along talking about different decades, I'll give you fragrances that were released during that time period and also flankers that came out during that time period so that you can see flankers are not a new thing. We'll also talk about why they have proliferated here recently and why they weren't as common back in the day. Heading into the early 90s, you started to see flankers pop up more often. For example, from Chanel, you had Ego East Platinum and also Ego East Cologne Concentré. You had sport fragrances still popping up with fragrances like Polo Sport or Aqua Quorum. Even Coros Fraicheur, a fresher version of Yves Saint Laurent Coros, which everybody knows is a powerhouse. You had fragrances like Opium Pour Homme Eau de Parfum coming out after Opium Pour Homme Eau de Toilette. And you had fragrances like Xerius Rouge kind of resurrecting a fragrance from a decade ago. And heading into the later 90s, you had a number of lines start to pop up, which have carried over to today. Things like Chanel Allure Homme, Boss Bottled, Azaro Chrome, and Aqua de Jo. There were still flankers in the late 90s, but actually not as many as you'll find in the early 90s. And best as I can tell, that's because a lot of brands were trying to come with new tent pole fragrance lines. So instead of trying to rework and retool these older fragrances and come out with flankers of those, they were trying to establish a new direction for their houses. As we start to head into the 2000s, you're gonna see a couple things, a bunch of new lines popping up and a bunch of new flankers. Now, a few things to keep in mind here. Some of the reasons that these flankers did become more prominent and more important. One reason that there were fewer flankers in the past is because fragrances for men just weren't as popular. Fragrances really started to kick off for men in a big way heading through the 80s and into the 90s, which is why if you look before that time period, you're not gonna really find many flankers at all. As men became more comfortable having fragrance collections and wearing fragrances, you saw more fragrances be released. More fragrances being released, more people buying those fragrances. Kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy there. You know, more fragrances are being purchased, more fragrances are being made, which means more fragrances are being purchased, and it just keeps on like that. Fragrance releases were much more sparse back decades ago. And it's not that these fragrance brands were sitting around absolutely perfecting everything down to the finest detail before they release something. That's not what was going on. Because if you go back decades ago, there were plenty of fragrances released that sucked. There are a lot of fragrances that came out in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s that just aren't very good. And if you really want to dig into it, you can go back before that. And there were still fragrances being released that weren't all that nice. Now, of course, when you talk about, you know, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and you say, oh, well, you had this fragrance, you had that fragrance, you had this fragrance, and those are awesome. Yeah. Absolutely, but you're forgetting all the trash that those fragrances are sitting on top of. The same stuff is going on nowadays. You have some fragrances that are amazing, you have others that aren't. So in that sense, it's not really any different now than it was then, it's just there were less fragrances then than there are now. There wasn't as much money in it in the past, so they had less releases, 
And so the ones that stick out, stick out in a big way. There's more money in it now, so therefore there are more fragrances being released now. Pretty simple. Okay, let's move on to the 2000s now, finally. In the early 2000s, you had flankers like Allure Home Sport, uh, Polo Blue, Eau de Toilette, B Men from Mugler, M7 Fresh, and Reeve Gauche Intense. And you had some big lines that were launched around that time also, like Armani Code, Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, uh, Gucci Pour Homme, also Gucci Rush. And I guess I'll make a point on that as well, really quickly. Oftentimes it's very trendy to just throw out a blanket statement and say, all new flankers are trash, or all new designers are trash, or niche fragrances nowadays are trash. It's very trendy to say that and say, hey, in the past, whether it's five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it was so much better. That's not realistic. And that knee jerk statement has been around for a long time. Talking specifically about Gucci Rush here, if you go back to around the time frame that it was released. So we're talking the early 2000s, you know, 2000, 2001, 2002, up through probably about 2004, you can find forum posts, old ones from Yahoo message boards that just trash Gucci Rush. And that's not just to this fragrance, that was a lot of fragrances released around then, but there were people saying that it's garbage, that Gucci has completely ruined their brand, that it's a disgrace, that it smells like a hamster cage, that it smells generic, that it smells boring, uninspired. You can find lots of archived threads about that fragrance and many more fragrances around that time period if you do enough digging. And also getting into fragrances around 2003, 2004, I can tell you, people were crapping on it along with a lot of releases from that time period. And I bring up Rush specifically because it's a fragrance that I love. And if you look for it nowadays that it's been discontinued for quite a while, it commands a big premium and you'll find all kinds of people saying, man, Gucci Rush, one of the best woodsy designer fragrances that's ever been released. So what I'm saying there is sometimes it's trendy to trash on newer fragrances. And then years later, when it's no longer easy to find, people will have rose colored glasses, you know, 2020 hindsight, and they'll go, man, they don't make them like they used to. As you head into the later 2000s, that's when the flankers really start to ramp up and become more prominent. Pure Malt, Versace Mano Fraiche, uh, Light Blue, which is a spinoff, of course, of Dolce & Gabbana's Pour Homme. Chanel Alorome Edition Blanche, Barbados Vintage, La Nuit de Lome, Polo Black, Alorome Sport Cologne, L'Anstant de Guerlain Extreme, Play Intense, uh, Dior Homme Sport, Dior Homme Intense, and many more. You can see late 2000s, a lot of flankers really started to kick up. And some of those flankers I just mentioned are fragrances that people still to this day think are fantastic. And one of the things that people will say is that uh, flankers have basically taken over and that there are no longer any new lines being produced as if, you know, new lines of fragrances stopped happening in the 90s or something, which isn't the case. In the early 2010s, you had new lines that included Spice Bomb, Eros, Blue de Chanel, Invictus, Legend, uh, Luna Rosa, L1212, Gucci Guilty, Valentino, Womo, and uh, Midnight in Paris. Yeah, I missed that one. And of course, you had flankers building off of those existing lines and new lines as well. So you had Gucci Guilty Black, Laurel Sport, O Extreme, Pure Havan, Dior Homme Cologne, Bulgari Man in Black, and many more. So that's going to take us to the late 2010s up to current day. And also, you have to understand when you talk about oh the lack of new lines, first off, it's not true. But when you talk about the lack of new lines, everything is flankers. You have to understand, we just went through this whole issue with COVID. I don't know if, if, if any of you guys remember that and still understand that it is screwing things up a bit still today. I would wager to you guys that there were lots of new things that these fragrance brands had planned. They got put on the back burner or completely canned because there are still issues with getting ingredients for fragrances where they can produce these to the levels that they would like to. So it's hard right now for a new fragrance to come out, period, let alone a new fragrance line that you're gonna put all kinds of advertising behind to try to build up. Because I know you guys know this, but it's easier to sell a flanker than a brand new line because you have a built-in fan base already for that line of fragrances. You know, if we're talking Aqua de Jo, La Nuit de Lome, whatever. So those people are gonna be looking out for those releases regardless. It's easier to move those bottles. And speaking of bottles and packaging, you already have that too. You just need to adjust it depending on whatever your new flanker is, how you wanna market it. You're not coming up with a new bottle design, a new box design, and uh, all that stuff. 
more convenient, I guess you could say. So I've written down a lot of new lines that have started since the late 2010s up until now. I'm gonna run through those really quickly. We're talking designer fragrance lines here. So we're talking roughly 2016 up through till today. Dior Sauvage, Prada Lome, Mont Blanc Explorer, Moschino Toy Boy. Yeah, I know kind of not uh, a brand new line, but for men, it is in my opinion. Uh, the new Gentleman line from Givenchy, uh, stronger with you, mustache, again, sort of Dunhill icon, coach for men, YSLY, bad boy, Dolce & Gabbana K, L'Enval de Cartier, The Scent, Cavalli Womo, Lacoste Lome, Trissardi Reflesso, Ferragamo Womo, uh, Age 24, Phantom, Ralph's Club, Matchpoint, Brioni, Eau de Parfum, Scandal Pour Homme, the new Kenzo Ohm line, No Limits, Hero from Burberry, Lome, Rojas, uh, Impact from Tommy Hilfiger, the new Ferragamo line, Calvin Klein, Defy, Paradise Found, Dunhill Driven, and more. So it's not that there aren't new lines out there. There are. They're being made now actually more than they were in the past. It's just there are more fragrances now, period. And that's also, I would wager, why there are more flankers. On top of the reasons I just touched on, if you go back in the past, let's say there were a dozen major men's houses for fragrances. And each one of those houses had maybe one or two fragrances that they were selling. You don't have as many options there for flankers. And again, the business wasn't there either. They weren't selling as much. Nowadays, you have dozens and dozens and dozens of fragrance houses that are trying to get in on the action, trying to get some of that money. And each of those houses doesn't have usually just one men's fragrance. They've got multiple. So you have so many different options for flankers there because maybe they look at one of their successful lines of fragrances and they go, you know, we don't have a summer take on this DNA. We should do that. Maybe people would like that. And so boom, a new flanker. Or maybe you have a very fresh line of fragrances and uh, the company looks at that and they go, hmm, maybe something for a date night. Maybe we should do that. And then boom, another flanker. All of this information is just to tell you guys Flankers aren't new and they're not going away. And a new flanker does not constitute a cash grab. Now, maybe you could say there are some flankers or some limited editions that are kind of cash grabby, where you smell it and you go, ah, it's, it's the exact same. But you can't go around throwing blanket statements saying all flankers are a cash grab any more than you could say, well, Dracar Noir in 1982 is a cash grab riding off the coattails of the original Dracar or Fahrenheit 32 in 2007 was a cash grab because it was a, a spring summertime take on Fahrenheit, which there were other uh, summer takes on that as well, but you know, whatever. In my opinion, you need to go into everything with an open mind. You need to smell each fragrance release as its own thing and judge it on its own merits. And no, that doesn't mean smelling a flanker and going, hey, this is kind of similar to the original, therefore it sucks. That's not, really the right way to go about things. Sometimes you might even realize that a new flanker, whether it's a twist or a modernization of an existing fragrance or a completely different thing altogether, works for you in a way that makes you very happy that the original didn't do for you. And you're going to miss that if you just write everything off and say, oh, flankers, they suck. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, there will be fragrances that are out right now that you can easily get that a lot of people love to crap on that once they're discontinued, years down the road, people will actually start to appreciate them and they'll look back and they'll go, man, I'm an idiot. I should have bought like three bottles of that stuff. And they will be badly, badly missed. It happens all the time. I've seen it, I can't tell you how many times since the mid 2000s that's happened. More times than I can count, it's, it's crazy. You just see history repeating over and over and over and over again and it's still happening now. So whether I crap on a flanker or somebody else craps on a flanker, don't take that as the hard and fast truth because it's not. However that fragrance makes you feel, if you enjoy it, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and buy it, wear it and be happy. And don't get caught up thinking because a fragrance is a flanker, it's lesser than a fragrance that comes in a different new bottle because that's not how things work. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me and hearing me talk about flankers. Have a great day. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.